strikes me a lot that we're running PhD training similar to running a company. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support and practical tips doing your PhD. And today, I'm not going to share any more practical small tips because I think I overwhelmed you by ImageJ, our studio from the previous videos. Today, I just really want to take an overall look on your program in PhD. And I hope by the end of this video, I can share with you more about why I make these videos on my platform. What do I hope this will bring an effect to your life? So this is going to be a coffee video. You can now get a coffee and we'll chat. So I start every video by saying this is a platform for motivation, peer support and practical tips for your PhD. There is no peer support unless we set up our own support system. And that is why I have created a private Facebook page. Only PhD students will be there. And I hope this will be a non-judgmental and motivating platform so that you can get the best out of the journey of your PhD. I hope to see you there very soon. What is a PhD training? Of course, you will get the terminal recognition by humankind of how smart you are and you walk out with a doctor title. But beside that, what does that represent? This is a program that's supposed to train you to become an independent researcher. That means it's a lot like being an entrepreneur. When I was doing my PhD, I think on average, I have a 60 hour work week, if not more. By the time when you're doing PhD, you have this mental pressure that you want to fill up the whole three years, four years. You may not remember and it may not be emphasized enough that you have to take care of yourself. By taking care of yourself, I mean making sure you're having enough sleep when you need the sleep and intentionally thinking about what you can do to grow as a person. You cannot pour from an empty cup. Entrepreneur will be the last word that I will be thinking of in my daytime. Today, I'd like to discuss the similarity of a PhD program and an entrepreneurship. Because in PhD, although you have an advisor that gives you an overall objective and maybe some details of the project, you have to go and figure things out all the time. You have to solve a problem independently. You have to work extremely hard. It strikes me a lot that we are running PhD training similar to running a company. Bear in mind that we are also taking a lot of independent decision. And I hope by this video, I can convince you to take time for your own personal growth. Let's say we are investing not money, but our time. If we work 60 hours a week, you can visualize this week as different blocks of time as your investment. And you have two hours as a block for any task. And here's how I would see your investment plan for your time during your PhD. Colorize in different tasks, you are probably having a similar output curve over time that you will have initial momentum. You get quite happy in the middle that you are having progress. In the end, you feel plateaued and you just needed a break. Diversified map with each time chunks that is more compatible to your day. From the overall perspective of the 60 hour week, I'd like to highlight this 10% of your week. Sometimes I understand you have to stay up and you can have like a long 80 hour work week, but your brain may be 30% less than what you are when you are sleep deprived. By actively nourishing your brain to spend time on personal growth during your PhD is an essential part. So that might mean taking some time to learn how to manage your project, how to speak to your advisor, how to persuade them to give you time for personal development because guess what? Persuasion is also an important skill. For example, 
The moment I learned how to use Illustrator in Adobe, I become really efficient. Comparing to my first poster and my recent poster, I saved a whole week. And if you can convince your advisor saying, I will go to this workshop and learn this skill, on making a poster so that I can come back and save five more days for my research in the week. I don't think any advisor will say no to that. You always have to persuade someone. Someone to give you a job is a persuasion. And I would propose that you need those time intentionally to help yourself bridge the skills gap that you need from PhD to the next position. Think about what are the intersection of your projects and what are the skills you will need in the future as well as right now. First, I'd like you to identify what are the possible next position that you would like yourself to be. What are these qualities for people having this position? And you have to do your research to ask the question, can I build 10% of my week as an investment of my time to work on these skills so that by the time you graduate, you'll be ready for these jobs and you'll stand out when you compare yourself with the others who have never thought about building other skills than the research knowledge. Allocate time to develop those muscle groups so that you can be stronger for your project as well as for your future. There will be a win-win situation there if you can hit the middle point of the Venn diagram. So I was in Clemson and Clemson's mascot is Tiger. So the graduate school has designed this Tiger 9 program because Tiger has nine lives, really clever. You can see this picture here from the website. When you are doing graduate school, you're not only developing your field specific knowledge, you're also developing your writing skills, your communication skills, your team leading skills, working with colleagues, managing your project, taking care of your own personal finance, budgeting for your project. If you are intentional about each of these different muscle groups, you are more likely to put in the right nutrient for the growth and you will get the biggest tree when you finish your PhD. When I was in Clemson, I was the liaison between postdoc association as well as the university administrator. It took me a long time to think about how I can make more workshops that is relevant so that it's of interest to postdoc and PhD students, as well as making them stronger in their employment phase. There are some area that we may not even think of being important to your PhD program. Things like diversity, gender inclusiveness in the workplace, professionalism and work ethic. I didn't understand the, the importance until I work in America and I realized I'm managing a team of really diverse students from different backgrounds. So going to events like the Black History Month um, it's going to help me connect with what is the current situation and there is an achievement gap between people of color and white people that go to college. And being ignorant about that is going to affect my ability to be a good professor. And a lot of time going to college and higher education is a way that we can learn new things as well as to unlearn a lot of our culture that is not applicable anymore. For example, I always learned that being female, we shouldn't be speaking up our mind and we should be more reserved. But men and women should contribute with the same scale so that the best idea can be seen or heard. It shouldn't be affected by the way you look or whether you are female or male. And this is something I couldn't have thought about if I never spent a little bit of my week, like a lunch webinar or some of the Friday afternoon, sometimes it's the weekend. I participated in this event that I felt like it was the most irrelevant to my research. But in terms, it become really helpful for me to connect with people that I work with, the people that I manage in the team, and it makes me a more effective worker. So this is a topic that definitely touched my heart and that's part of the reason why I built this YouTube platform because I believe not every country has the same emphasis on professional development. 
But guess what? We all have to find a job in the future. You still need to have the skill sets that we talk about in this competency list. If we can be more intentional about this training in PhD and have more coffee break conversation with our mentee and mentor, and being postdoc, I recognize myself being mentored by my advisor. But at the same time, I'm providing mentorship to younger PhD students. And that was the reason why I was inspired to make PhD coffee time. So I hope by sharing this, it is going to make you convinced that this is requiring your openness to learn something more so that it will in turn help you in the long run. It's like an investment. And I hope you will start investing your time early. So if you have a work week of 60 hours, invest two hours a week or three hours a week just to go out of your comfort zone. It could be a statistical um, language that you don't need yet, or it could be a gender culture workshop. Take that as your professional development. I hope this video is going to bring you to think about what are these skills that is going to help you as PhD, as well as your project. How can these important employable skills be best developed in your PhD program? With that, I hope to leave you to think about this and I will leave you to look at all these skill sets. Share with me in the comments below what is your weakest skills that you want to develop more. Sometimes we are laser focused in one small project bring outcome to just the short time but for the long-term growth you still need all this element to be fulfilled thank you for watching this video please make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you won't miss anything that's coming up see you the next time